Why is it that golf, for example, can be associated with people who are in power, but not nail art or thigh high boots? I don't think there's enough political writers that are making things accessible to people. I see that as my goal, specifically focusing on young women. Teen Vogue is an amazing place for my work. This is the basics of what it is to be involved and engaged as a citizen, is being informed. And the idea that it, it's shocking that, that that would be happening in a young woman's publication is so part of the problem. Young women are told that the things we like are too silly to participate in the conversation and then chastised for not participating in the conversation and not voting. Tell us a bit about why your column is called Thigh High Politics. I know that comes from an insult that came from Tucker Carlson. The abusive, bigoted, Those pieces were a little smarter than your piece about threatening the, the sovereignty States. of a whole religion. All right, I gotta go. You should stick to the thigh high boots. You're better at that. In a way, it was kind of a relief because I had been seeing this patronizing, stealthy condescension around Teen Vogue covering politics. And to just kind of hear it, like just completely not even a dog whistle anymore, just this blatant misogyny, um, is kind of a relief because you can point at it as a bullseye and forge ahead even more righteously. I feel like I can keep going and I don't have any plans on shutting up. When we think about feminist progress, it can't happen without men viewing feminism as their personal responsibility. How do you convince them to feel that way? I have trouble with framing it as inviting men into the conversation. The power structure is the men at the table and we're desperate to sit there. I think that men need to make themselves uncomfortable. Even my little brother, he's a very good example of somebody who had to learn that I was not trying to call him out and trying to place blame on him and that I am passionate about these things and have compassion for him because he's my little brother. And we are now able to have full feminist dialogue, <laughs> me and Paul Duca. When you think back on the college or high school visits you've done, are there any anecdotes or singular moments that really stand out? Uh, there was a girl who had this amazing head of hair and she was touching her hair which talked to me and then stopped and she said, you know, you were touching your hair while you were talking and you were saying like and you were saying um and I thought, oh, this is so unpolished. Why did they bring this woman here to speak to us? And then I actually listened to what you had to say and I was excited by it and I realized that I was even policing that in my own head there's all of these sexist elements where the way that young women are socialized to talk and the things young women like are asserted as disqualifying factors. But this is the way I've been socialized to talk and this is the way I talk to my friends and that's what I want to encourage is uh, not having to put on a performance of straight white male you know, respectability in having political conversations and continuing to be yourself and care about the things you care about as a young woman while messing with politics. Mm -hmm.